So now let's consider uh, how a signal might be distorted during transmission. So let's think about this as a uh, in terms of a communication system that's been generalized. So a general communication system may have these uh, components within it, right? And we could consider this to be a black box of transducers, transmitters, the communication channel, uh, the receiver, and so on. So we could model our, our communication system just like these LTI systems, input signal, output signal, look at it in time domain or frequency domain. But what happens as the signal passes through all these, right, there could be some distortion that appears. <clears throat> and how would we uh, be able to look at this? How would we be able to model this? We want to be able to think about distortion in our communication channel because generally, right, if you're trying to send a message, uh, putting it in and getting it out, you want to be able to get that exact message at the output with minimal distortion. So we can take this, right, and we can just say that our communication system, right, we can model this as an LTI system that follows these stability rules that we discussed in the previous video. So we'll have this input signal and output signal, and we can characterize them uh, in the frequency domain like, like we discussed in the previous video. And we can treat the entire communication system uh, just like an LTI system. So we have an input with an input magnitude that is changed at the output to an output magnitude that's characterized by the transfer function magnitude multiplied by the input signal magnitude. <clears throat> and we can also characterize uh, this as saying that if this output <clears throat> um, magnitude, right, if this modifier, right, if the transfer function of the communication system, so this, if the amplitude of this modifies the amplitude of our input, if it modifies it differently across different uh, frequencies, then this would be amplitude distortion, and the amplitude could be distorted at various frequencies. <clears throat> so this is what uh, amplitude dis signal distortion might look like during transmission. Uh, what about the phase angle distortion? Well, we have this, uh, if we have this input phase angle, O uh, theta x, uh, at the output, right, this would be mo modified into the theta x plus some theta h, right? And this theta h, right, this comes from our system. So this comes from the communication system somewhere. And so if this is, uh, this, this could be considered to be a type of distortion, or this term is where distortion would come from in your communication channel. This is another form of distortion. So this would be a type of phase distortion. So the, really the question should be, if we can model our communication system as an LTI system, and we know in a communication system that we want to have an input signal that passes through a system and at the output is very similar to the input or at least can be recovered, right? Because we're trying to send a message, some type of information to someone. We want to be able to return easily to this input signal. So this leaves us with the question is if we want to be able to return to our input signal from our output signal, then what should this be? What should this transfer function look like in order to minimize distortion? How can we minimize amplitude distortion? And how can we minimize phase distortion so that our input message can be easily recovered at the output? It could be identical or in some form that's easily recoverable.